VDBs are working in Unreal Engine. Here's how to get them working quickly, plus some super secret tips that will make them look as good as possible. You're not gonna hear these anywhere else. The first thing you're gonna need is the free VDB shader from Pixel Lab. This thing is really good. Gives you full control over density, temperature, emission. I've linked to it in the description below. This is gonna save us from writing our own shader. So let's start a new Unreal Engine project. I did do this with a game project to start with, but unfortunately when you have a VDB in your scene and you want to look at it with Path Tracer, the whole thing crashes. You don't want to get that far down the line and then hit this problem. Use a film template with ray tracing enabled. Now that we're in, we just want a really basic lighting setup for our scene so we can view our VDBs nicely. So remove all of the usual stuff from your outliner and go to your window menu, to the environment light mixer, and then just click all the buttons. Now we want to add the free VDB shader that we got from Pixel Lab. So if you go to your downloads where it should be, you'll find a zip. Inside the zip, you're looking for a folder called Pixel Lab underscore VDB underscore shader. Copy that. And then we're going to go to our project folder, into our content folder, and then paste that shader folder. Now that folder will appear in your content browser inside Unreal. Go to your add menu and under all classes, search for heterogeneous volume. Click that and it will be added to your scene. With it selected, you'll see in the details panel there's an area where material can go. That's where we're going to drag our Pixel Lab VDB shader. So you drag that across into your details panel. Now we have a VDB in our scene. Now the lovely folks at Pixel Lab have given me a discount code for you guys that's just on screen right now and in the description below. That will give you 20% off anything from their library and it's a big library. They've got some amazing materials, terrains, they even have this heat distortion and blur pack for Unreal Engine which I'm really interested in myself anyway because I've tried to build one from scratch with mixed results but this one from the video looks so much better than mine, so I'm really tempted by that. They also, of course, have VDBs. They've got explosions, clouds, fire. I'm gonna be testing out a bunch of these in this video, and you're gonna see some really cool renders of them. So if you're interested in anything from Pixel Lab, feel free to use the link in the description and the code, which will get you 20% off. I've got a fire asset that I'm dying to test out. It's an animated VDB, so it's got a single VDB file for every frame in that animation. To import it, I'm gonna create a folder in my content browser in Unreal Engine, call it VDB, just to be organized. Then I'm gonna to go to Explorer where my VDB is saved, select the first file, frame number one, and then just drag that across to your Unreal Engine content browser. And then you'll get an import pop-up. The density is gonna be set to the red channel. You need temperature for this being a fire asset to be set to the green channel under attributes A. For some reason, it always defaults to attributes B. Just remove it out of there. Then just click import and it will take a moment to import all of your frames. And depending on the length of your animation, it may take a little while. Once that's done, you need to go to the Pixel Lab VDB shader folder and inside there, there'll be a folder called source files. And inside there is a master material. This needs to be duplicated so that we can create a brand new VDB if we wanted to keep our old one. Just change the name slightly. I'm gonna call mine fire and then open that material. Once you're inside the material, just navigate and find the VDB file node. This is where we specify which VDB this material is going to use. So once you've selected that node, you'll see a little drop down in the details there and you can just select the new VDB that we imported. Now that that's done, you can just right click on your new master material and select create material instance. This material instance can be dragged over into the material slot of your heterogeneous volume. And you probably won't see anything straight away, especially if it's an explosion or fire, because they can grow over time and you'll be at frame zero. So if you look in the details panel of the heterogeneous volume, there'll be a part where you can specify the actual frame that you're viewing but if you want to see it play back there's also checkboxes for play and loop and that's looking pretty good but if your goal is to use this in a cinematic then you're gonna want to use a level sequence so you can send it to movie render queue to do this go to the top of the window and add a new level sequence once that's created and you've given it a name we'll also create a new cine camera as well and drag that cine camera into your sequencer. We also want to drag in the heterogeneous volume that we've already created into our sequencer as well. In sequencer, next to heterogeneous volume, you'll see a small plus button. Click that and select heterogeneous volume component. Then click plus next to heterogeneous volume component. Find frame and click that. Now we can specify what frame we're on at any given moment. Make sure your playhead's at the beginning and then type in frame zero and click the little keyframe button. But we want to do the same at the end. So I'm gonna move my playhead to 399 and type in frame 399 and it will play. But by default, the keyframes we've set are Bezier keyframes. So highlight them both and then change them to linear. Now it will play at a constant rate. 
Okay, we're getting into the details now. So I did notice while playing around with this that sometimes translucent objects would render on top of a VDB, even though they were placed behind them. It's very easily solved by going into your translucent material, whatever that might be, whether it's glass or something else, and just setting the translucency pass to render before depth of field, problem solved. So if your VDB starts to disappear as you get too far away from it, there's an easy solve, and that's a console command, which is r.heterogeneousvolumes.maxtracedistance. The default is 30,000, but if you set it to like a million, you should be good to go. But if you need more, just set it to higher. Really excited about this bit now, so we're going to get pass tracing working, and we're going to fix all the quality problems you may run into. In your console, type in r path tracing dot heterogeneous volumes and set that to one. So that's all you need to do to get path tracing working with VDBs. But now you're going to see something a bit ugly. See on the edge of this five VDB, now you can see a pixelated edge. This was not here in lip mode, but in path tracing, you can see this. Good news is this can be fixed with two console commands. The first one is r dot heterogeneous volumes dot ortho grid dot shading rate. And the other one is r dot heterogeneous volumes dot frustrum grid dot shading rate. These are set to four by default, but if you set those to one, that would be cinematic quality. But having done that now, you're probably going to see another artifact. And as I change the camera angle in Path Tracer, you can see this now. It's another kind of glitch in the viewport, which looks like the fires disappearing and coming back. Now, the reason this is happening is because we've increased the shading rate on both of these grids, but now we need more memory to display the VDB properly. So there are two more console commands to fix this. So one is, <laughs> these are really long r.heterogeneousvolumes.orthogrid.maxbottom level memory in megabytes. And then r.heterogeneousvolumes.firstroomgrid.maxbottom level memory in megabytes. Both of these by default are set to 128, but if you change that up to something like 512 in this case, but it really depends on the VDB. It looks so much better. Look at that edge. It's just so much nicer. I'm really pleased with this. Now I did promise some cool renders, so I've gathered together some awesome VDBs from Pixel Lab. I got this fire asset, an explosion, some smoke, and an awesome nebula. Here you go. So it's nice to see VDBs working in Unreal Engine, and it does seem like there's some planned updates as well for 5.4, which address things like translucency, shadows, and lumen, as well as some maybe quality of life fixes for Path Tracer. One of them I hope will be to actually expose these console commands to the details panel, because doing it via the console is a bit of a pain, to be fair. That's all from me on this video. I'll see you on the next one.